What's poppin', what's Gucci, what's poppin', what's Gucci, what's poppin', what's Gucci beauty gang? Long time, no talk. But the time apart has not gone in vain. Cause as you can see, we have now entered into the EC Meme 4.0 era, okay? Not only that, today also is my seven year social media anniversary. Seven, y'all. Okay. Exactly seven years ago, I posted my very first YouTube video. Some of you guys have been around since then, and it's just really wild and mind-blowing to comprehend the fact that your girl has been doing this for seven years, since I was a junior in college. And when I meet some of you guys in person, I'm like, yeah, I've been watching you since I was in grade school, and now I'm a freshman in college or whatever, I'm just like, what? Where is time gone? What has happened? What, what What is going on here? Anyway though, I just want to start this video off with making a cheers not only to myself, but also to you guys for being on this journey with me and just being a part of the gang. The unconditional love and support and understanding and patience and empowerment that like we have. It's a melting pot for beauty gang. I'm so proud of that. So cheers to self as well as cheers to y'all. If you're seeing this, then I more than likely already have posted my EC Maymay 4.0 launch because you know I be trying to go all out ever since I rebranded but two three years ago now when I got management every year February 1st I try to reinvent myself level up you know elevate I'm all about elevation and as a lot of you guys kind of know if you've been watching my content over the last year or so I kind of just been going through a whirlwind of things womanhood adulthood becoming a married woman introspection it's a, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot, it's been a lot. But I'm grateful for all the blessings, blessings plus lessons, blessings, okay, that have come from the journey. Seven years is no, it's no little slight work. It's not something that is easy or accomplishable for a lot of people. So to be able to look back on my journey the last seven years and uh, digest it, it's been a huge reflective journey. And there's just been a lot of like revelations and different understanding of self that I have had to deep dive on in order for me to show up as my best self on here. I would say for the past year and a half or so, almost since like me and my husband moved here to downtown Chicago, it was fun and it was exciting and we were on an adrenaline high and just like, you know, when you, whenever you do something new and it's a change, it's fun. But eventually that adrenaline fizzles out and like reality starts to seep in. And I've talked about it in amount of times and honestly this is more than likely the last time I'm going to talk about it because we're entering into a new era which means shedding the dead weight no longer looking in the rearview mirror there's a lot of things that I was realizing I was continuously like dwelling and living in the past and therefore stuck there instead of looking forward putting one foot in front of the other of like what's next but saying all that to say after we moved and got settled in and stuff like that I feel like I just ended up super lost super confused, didn't quite know what to do next, and ultimately I ended up feeling unfulfilled and unsatisfied with my life. And this is this was the crazy thing for me of realizing like I'm living in an answered prayer, but yet I'm unhappy, unsatisfied, unfulfilled. Like the two didn't quite make sense to me because in college that EC who first started this journey seven years ago, where I'm at right now in my life was like, that was it, like that's the goal. I know I made it. And then I got here and I quote unquote made it, but internally it felt empty, it just felt empty. And a lot of that is why I became so inconsistent. Like there would be times where I could show up and then other times where I just didn't have it in me or I didn't have the direction. I didn't know what the hell to do. One of the examples I love using the most about this phase of kind of like this internal battle. Yeah, literally, I've, I've been having an internal battle with myself for a while now. And I think that I recently have come on the other side of that battle. Like EC maybe 4.01 that shit. But it took a while to get to this point. It took a lot of tears. It took a lot of visiting that dark house. If you've watched uh, my other like late night Vin sessions before, then I've kind of spoken on the theory of the dark house about basically looking everywhere outside of self for answers that you can only find within. So it's been a very interesting 
journey overall and I just felt like the best way to start this Easy Meme 4.0 level up that we're in was to start it with a conversation you know I realized on this journey of self-discovery and trying to understand myself more and whatnot that it's important to recognize your superpower. What is kind of like that purpose? Why am I here? What should I do with this position that I've been placed in in life? X, Y, Z. And I think over the last year and a half, I've been constantly asking myself that question and have kind of recently come to the understanding and comprehension that my superpower is my relatability, transparency, and genuineness because I'm someone who wears my heart on my sleeve and, and honestly I realized too that's kind of one of the reasons I haven't been able to really show up consistently for y'all because spiritually I'm not someone who's able to deal with fraudulent internal behavior long what do I mean by that I mean like if something is not feeling right, if the spirit is disturbed, it's hard for me to show up on camera and pretend as if it's not. So I feel like I just ended up going MIA at multiple random times over the course of the last year or so because I was trying to figure it out 100% on my own. Especially, you know, the Virgo and me, I'm thinking I can fix everything, I can do everything, I got this, blah, 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 until life had gotten to a point where I did not have this. I could not get myself out of that rut or that storm that I kind constantly found myself back in and I knew that it was a storm because I would have times where I have this burst of motivation but you know as I have said multiple times motivation is fleeting it doesn't last forever and that is why having discipline in your life is so important but I like both so at times where I didn't feel or have motivation and then also didn't have discipline that's the times where I would just dip like go in my egg go quiet the times that I did have motivation it was a little bit temporary and then I found myself back in that kind of like dark hole stormy place so it wasn't until I started taking those times of going MIA, I kind of call it like my pause season. It wasn't until I started being more intentional about what I did with that time. Cause you can, so for example, old EC would take a pause season, go MIA and I might just not be posting, but I'm still scrolling on social media. I'm binge watching my life away with Netflix and Hulu. Just like things that aren't really, it's kind of like putting a bandaid over the wound or whatever was the issue, but it wasn't addressing or trying to dig deep on, well, why does, why do I keep finding myself back here? Why does that dark cloud keep finding me? There was a point that came last year where my husband put me on to stillness. It honestly sounds a little bit simpler than what I feel like it is and what a lot of us even realize, or at least speaking for myself. We were just sitting outside in nature one day and he told me just close my eyes and just be silent. And I started to hear like the wind and like, the grass. And I know this is gonna kind of sound really head ass, but I'm being very serious. He refers to it as God's technology, right? So everything created by God, just sitting in that. And I found myself like to be emotional. I ended up crying. While I was experiencing this, I was trying to dig in my memory of like, dang, when's the last time that I sat in God's technology? No distraction, just quiet, just still, just, you know? And I could not think of it. And that's what made me emotional. That's what made me cry, because I'm like, Dang, I'm an adult in my mid to late 20s and I can't remember the last time that I've just been bored, right? Like not having something in front of myself to be entertained. And that's kind of what I was saying, like the times where I would go MIA and stuff like that off of social media, but I would be spending it scrolling or watching Netflix and stuff. That's not me being still. That's really just me ignoring that issue and just buffering it with something else to entertain me. And it's honestly ultimately why I never benefited from those early on pause seasons. Almost as a form of insanity to me a little bit because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a change to happen. And it's like, okay, this time, once I get off social media for a little bit, stop posting, like, and I come back, I'll be okay. Just a cycle. And it wasn't until I started taking those pause seasons to actually just be here, like within self and also God. And it's kind of weird to say because I have I always believed in God, but I kind of have realized like prior to my more recent year, I would say in adulthood, I was like a default believer. So like my parents were very spiritual. So I was raised in church, even went to private school from fourth grade through college. So I had multiple theology classes and stuff, but like beyond just saying my grace, saying a prayer when I wake up in the morning, kind of like bare minimal believer energy. That's all the relationship I really had with God. I would constantly kind of say, oh, I want to develop a deeper relationship and I want to do better 
better at this, but it was kind of just fluff to me. When you just say shit just to say it, but you don't implement action behind it, to me that's just fluff. So that was one thing. The other thing was there's so many things that were difficult for me to comprehend and digest in this phase of my life. And what I realized too is that I just started the second quarter of my life, right? If we're splitting life into quarters, zero to 25 is first quarter, 25 to 50 second quarter, et cetera, et cetera. So no wonder so many things in my life feel so uncomfortable and different. Even with multiple deaths that have happened in my family, that was something that truly rocked my world, disrupted like everything. And I did not know how to cope with that, how to deal with those emotions, those feelings, and why it was happening so much. Like, kind of like looking like what's happening on top of us coming out of a global pandemic. Two years of this pandemic, and not even just a matter of like the world changing and life never going back to what it used to be, but also like those two years, I didn't really get to see my family. And my family is very close knit. We would get together all the time, especially holidays and stuff. We weren't able to see each other because of what the restrictions were. Anyway, when I started catching on like, okay, I'm coming back then I leave. I come back, then I leave. Inconsistent. There's a few things that I realized as to why. One thing being that I used to feel like social media was a one size fits all. I have to be this type of influencer, I have to make this type of content, I have to have this type of lifestyle, I have to wear these type of clothes, I gotta get this type of, you know, in order to be successful, in order to win this industry whatever that ended up being very detrimental because i ended up not only being influenced but almost like mimicking the norm like what the crowd was doing there's a video that i want to share with you guys that i feel like perfectly explains what i'm trying to say I feel like we oftentimes make jokes about the matrix and stuff, not realizing we're actually living in it. And it was a lot of things that was happening in my life I wasn't aware of that was very matrixy. One of the things being my screen time report, right? If you have an iPhone every Sunday, I believe, the end of the week, they'll send you a screen time report of how much you average daily. My numbers were disgusting. They were disgusting. There was multiple times where I was averaging seven to eight hours a day. If you times seven by seven, that's 49. So when I started calculating these numbers, I'm like, so you telling me I spend 49 plus hours. It only takes 48 hours to make two days. So you're telling me I spend two days plus just like this, scrolling, right? And that's minus whatever, because Netflix doesn't tell you your screen time. So that's minus whatever time I was spending binging TV and stuff, just like out of self, like in another world. And it's like no wonder I was feeling unhappy and unsatisfied and unfulfilled and no direction because where the where am I looking? There were no answers in any of the places that I was wasting my time. It was a waste of time. Two days plus of my actual life. And when I started realizing these things and like calculating things and even like with family members passing away or getting sick and I'm, I'm realizing damn if I'm losing two days like this I couldn't have spent even three hours with one of my loved ones like when you start thinking about what's truly important in life the valuable and tangible thing things that can't be bought it's a major reality check that i did need 100 percent needed it was also a painful discovery and, and also embarrassing to be honest because it's like i felt like i was in so much more control of my life than what i really was and then it wasn't until i hit this wall of feeling stagnant and complacent and that, that's not even in my nature like I don't even feel like that's in my DNA which is why I just had this ongoing internal battle of like staying in one place isn't really me the lack of elevation and evolution that's happening in my life isn't really me but I also don't know how to get out of this or what happened or what is happening to me the main thing I can contribute to this change the way I've changed my life and my mentality and just my direction was being intentional about developing that relationship with God, I've talked about this a few different times. Not in huge depth because I do feel like my spiritual journey is a bit personal, but I also feel like if in any way, shape, or form this can help somebody else as an influencer, I feel like it's my duty to share, right? So basically my husband had bought me this beginner's Bible last year, and it's a beginner's Bible because before you just hop into the Bible, there's a summary about the book that you're about to read, and then also as you're reading the different chapters and stuff within the book, there might be 
summaries on the side or a summary page uh, explain in a little bit more modern tone what the passage is saying what it means sometimes I feel like the Bible can be very poetic and not that direct so if you can't read between the lines it can seem very intimidating which is why I love the Bible that my husband got me so much it is really changed and transformed my life like my being and it's given me a better understanding of self and it's been a beautiful journey because it wasn't something somebody forced me to do and it's like strictly a relationship between me and God me and self and to be honest it wasn't until I hit rock bottom you know older people are always saying like give it to God blah 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 and I, I felt like well that's easy to say but what, what does that even mean blah 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 I feel like now I'm in a place where I really understand what they mean by that when life gets just so hard and uncomfortable which is where the state that I was in I didn't really have a choice but to give it to God I was like well this is kind of like my last resort because EC herself is not I can't figure it out by myself I don't know what to do because everything extrinsically in my life screams that I should be happy and satisfied and things are great you know making money marrying the man of my dreams living in a high-rise in Chicago like life is great life should feel great but yet internally was feeling super empty and unsatisfied and unfulfilled and it was just a really weird state to be in and no matter how hard I had tried to pull myself out of it it was not working so it wasn't until like I had let a devotional book which I'll link in the description box below that in the Bible if any of you guys are interested but a daily devotional so 365 days is a devotional assigned to every day each devotional also comes with a particular scripture like a verse so read that read the little message in between and then there's a prayer at the end and then at the bottom of each page is like four or five lines if you want to expand your thoughts on what the passage was summarized xyz feel like god just put it on my spirit one day to be like hmm well let's start here so if it's like mark chapter 3 verse 13 that's the devotional i would go to mark chapter 3 in the bible and read the whole thing to give me a clearer understanding of that passage because i feel like just one or two sentences of a verse it can kind of like you know, hit between the lines. It can kind of give you a little something, but lack of context, it's hard to really digest what the passage is meaning by that verse that hit. I started that way and it's just built out into this like Bible study thing that I do with myself and God. For me not to only continue building that relationship, but also it helps me understand myself more. It helps me understand this life more. I know for sure when deaths started to happen left and right in my family, it just left me in a very confusing and frantic state and then kind of brought up that childhood trauma that I didn't even realize was childhood trauma until my older years of my dad passing away when I was so young he passed when I was 12 years old we hadn't had any other deaths in my family up until 2021 when my aunt passed away and I just had all these feelings of just devastation and hurt my heart literally hurt and I did not know what to do with that. Thankfully, I've married a man of God. As a matter of fact, he's actually a PK, so he was raised in the church all his life who's guided me in his own way throughout this journey, never forced it on me because even him gifting me the Bible wasn't like, here, you need to do this. It was just like, I didn't have a Bible myself and my husband felt as if one day this can come in handy for you. Do as you want with it, but like, just so you have your own. It has literally been the most beautiful and transformative gift anybody has ever given me in my life because it's helped me unlock a different side of my myself in a different understanding that I didn't know. A different level of consciousness that I didn't even know was there. And you know what I find so interesting too, just about like this journey, for example, I don't know how many of you guys have heard of, of the saying, peace be still right that's another one of those phrases of like give it to God and I don't know if people really think in depth on what it actually means peace be still it's all there there's peace and stillness is what I've taken from it it wasn't until I became still and quiet and silent and when I'm having these moments with God when I'm doing my Bible study doing my devotional I have no other distraction around me I don't got music playing in the background I don't got Netflix going on my phone is nowhere near me I'm just there. I'm just being. Actually hearing my thoughts. It's kind of wild because I didn't realize I was not hearing myself. Because we live in a generation with so much influence and there's entertainment everywhere. You can be entertained for the rest 
of your life if you wanted to like constantly in that microwave and I think it's so interesting too like the clip that I shared with you guys our society is becoming super robotic like a lot of people can't even have a face-to-face -face conversation anymore let alone not pick up their phone when they're talking to somebody and that's something I've always prided myself in being able to still do if I am in contact with a loved one a friend whatever I'm not touching my phone like I'm in this conversation with them the same way I'm talking to you guys whereas there's a lot of people that I have seen that I've been around that I interact with that just don't even realize they're locked into the matrix and like I kind of almost even want to pose a question to you guys of are you someone who has attended to do that do you realize when your parent is talking to you when your siblings talking to you your friend your significant other whoever that you are half in half out and to me it's not even a half thing your attention is where it's at there's no way that you can hear somebody talking to you and actually digesting everything they're saying like holding that conversation while also being here you cannot do it. It's sad that we're living in this time and space where people aren't even recognizing and realizing what is happening or what has already happened. And it takes a lot of self-awareness and acknowledgement to be like, oh, let me put my phone away. Let me be intentional about listening. Just listening. The people, our loved ones that we get to spend quality time with in person, that's not forever. This shit is going to be here forever. It's not going anywhere. This might rock some of you guys' worlds a little bit. This is just kind of like an interesting thing me and Josh talk about and think about often. Those that know about the Bible, or maybe you don't even know about the Bible, but you've heard about Adam and Eve, Garden of Eden, right? Eve bit the apple, gave it to Adam, X, Y, Z. What is on the back of majority of our devices? And the reason why God is said not to do that because it was just an overload and influx of knowledge and if you think about what these phones and this technology is it's an influx it's an ongoing overload of knowledge in some ways it can be used for good but in other ways if not managed correctly it can be a detriment to your life just living your life during the times where I was going through the beginning of the pause season constantly scrolling on Netflix and stuff like that I was looking for these answers like why am I unhappy why am I unsatisfied and I would see somebody doing something and then be like, oh, well, maybe that's what I should try. And I kind of like chalked it up to essentially I was trying to fit other people's puzzle pieces into my own life. Their life and their lane is theirs and mine is my own. And the only way for me to figure out the right puzzle pieces in my life is to look within myself. It's cool to get inspo and ideas here and there. But in the way that I was digesting things, it was mad unhealthy, y'all. Mad unhealthy. Like about two weeks after getting married, me and Josh weren't really on social media weren't in technology just really like in marital bliss right I finally found myself on social media for the first time scrolling almost like catching up on what I missed went on there fine happy calm got off feeling anxious insecure sad you gotta pay attention to the emotions that this shit has on you those emotions came from like me seeing other people winning doing their things starting their businesses blah blah, blah and then feeling like oh I'm not doing enough I'm not that that feeling of like I'm not good enough just really like toxic in a time period in my life that should have been the most blissful you have to acknowledge your thoughts you really got to listen to how you're thinking and like really try to calculate this a and b really equal or am I like very far off? Another thing that I had to like catch with myself shortly after posting our wedding pictures, I posted it on Instagram, posted it on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. My mom had come over one day and she was like, oh, I saw you posted your pictures on Facebook. They look really good. And I had to catch myself because the first thing out of my mouth in response to that was about to be, oh yeah, well, the last time I was on Facebook, they weren't doing good in likes. And I had to catch myself in realizing it and like view that thought as why do I give a if the because it's not even content like this is my life this is a huge ass milestone I just took in my life and I'm worried about or thinking about oh well they didn't do well likes wise so what, but what does that mean and that's the interesting thing about being in this time and space especially as an influencer so much of my life is content and I'm hypercritical about beautiful milestone moments in my life. I mean, if that doesn't scream toxic and matrix, I don't know what 
it does. So it wasn't until I started like paying attention to my thoughts. It didn't make any sense why that was what I was feeling or caring about. It was naturally coming out of my mouth almost. Asking yourself why five times will help you get to the root of pretty much all your problems. Why was my response to my mom going to be, oh, well, the likes, it wasn't doing well. Why was that what I was going to say? When I dug deep on those whys, it kind of ended up coming back to the fact that I did start this journey seven years ago. I started it as a junior in college. It's like you think you're kind of grown at that time, but as I'm entering into the late, well, I'm not, I'm in my late 20s now. I'm like, I didn't know shit back then. I mean, everything is a season. Everything happens at the time and the place that it's supposed to happen. So I don't beat myself up or regret not having the mentality and consciousness that I do now as a 28 year old as I did then. But it's just interesting to like analyze my life, where my headspace was, what my mentality was, like what my thoughts were back then or my understanding of things. I just feel like, especially in college, as a college student, I was mad impressionable. And I entered into an industry I was not ready for, prepared for, because there's no guideline for it. And I say this all the time and stand 10 toes down on it because I did not plan to be who I am today. Like I didn't know any of this shit was gonna happen. I was terrified to say a hundred thousand. Josh always would tell me like, you got a hundred K, you can do it, blah, blah. Anytime I even thought of a hundred K when I first started, made me want to throw up or shit myself, literally. Fast forward to two years later, I hit a hundred K plus subscribers. I graduate from college and I don't have to work for anybody. I can work for myself because I'm bringing in my own income from this. It was a beautiful opportunity and like space to be in, but it was also mad confusing and like uncharted territory. The social media thing in general influencing is still a relatively new aspect of society. I'm not shocked that I fell into this mentality that there was a one size fits all for this influencing thing. And as I started to get more brand deals and have contracts and be around other influencers who already had management and maybe uh, were more veterans in the space of social media than I was, I thought that I had to do what they were doing to be at their level of success. Then it's like also, well, what is success? because to be honest, I used to think that the one size fits all is the Instagram baddie. Always looking fly, hair always done, nails done, lashes done, everything did. That's what seemed to get the most likes and engagement and comments. And then when you tie that, that's usually what brands are looking for, good engagement, stuff like that. And, and this is the ignorance of social media. I don't feel like a lot of people know and understand. The likes and engagement aren't everything if you are not brandable. Us influencers are walking billboards. If we don't align with what a brand is, what they stand for, it doesn't matter how many likes, how many followers, how many whatever you have, they're not gonna work with you. It wasn't until I got management that I started to have this different understanding like, oh, this social media thing is no one size fits all. But then also with that, it was kind of like, oh, well maybe it's not that, it's not this Instagram baddie, flex culture, whatever, but maybe it's more of this. And that was the phase that I then went through when we moved here of like, well, everything needs to be clean, nudes, whites, cream. And I'm a very colorful, person okay but I stepped away from that and wasn't true to myself because I was like okay well maybe this is actually the way that I'm supposed to go my manager was trying to help me out and send me different people to like kind of pay attention to the reoccurring thing that I had saw was they were all just kind of like the European vibe aesthetic. So I then went into that thinking that's how I needed to be. And then it wasn't until what the end of 2021 that I started to try to take back pieces of myself, like figure myself out. And one of those things being what inspires me? What do I love? And I've always loved color. I've always been a very vibrant ass person. If you've never seen my room transformation video, it can explain it a lot more because I'm not going to go in full depth with that. But like that was to me the first start of EC trying to get back to easy. That was kind of a bold move on my part because we live in such a microwave society. It feels like if you detour too far from what the conglomerate is doing, you should be careful with that. And I had to basically say like, I don't care at this point. I want to represent me and my truest self and that was like the first stage of that and i haven't been more prouder of what my space has become because that was my space that's where i go into every day my office slash beauty room like that's where i create 
majority of my content. When I was in that European aesthetic vibe, I walked into my space constantly uninspired and unmotivated because it did not represent me. It didn't reflect who I am. Now when I walk in, I'm like, yeah, this shit is dope. Like I feel powerful, to be honest. Walking into my space, I feel motivated. I feel inspired by the things I have all over my room that best reflect and represent who I am. That was kind of the crazy thing too of really realizing like, I am one of one. There is no time for me to try to fit into something that is is trending or whatever that culture is. It's honestly been a, a very overwhelming, chaotic, unexpected journey that I, I appreciate. I don't regret that matrix phase of me trying out all these different things and like kind of almost going down the wrong path in terms of alignment with my life. Post YouTube black and allowing myself to feel inferior there, coming back and being like, I'm never gonna feel like that again. So I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna buy this and I'm gonna buy that in order for me to feel a part of whatever that culture is. I lost myself in that. I lost my purpose in that. It, it became such a like self centered, narrow-minded place to dwell in. And it's kind of like no wonder I did not know where to take my next step as I kind of was starting to come out of it and realizing what happened in the first place. Like when you're in the matrix, you don't really realize that it's happening. And then when you become aware of the matrix, it's like, okay, I'm glad I'm aware of it now. I can see and pinpoint when it's happening, but how do I move forward with my life? And then that's kind of where I'm saying like developing that relationship with God and self has really helped me start putting one foot in front of the other of like how I want to show up. And the conclusion I came to about all of this is that God gave me what I wanted, the glitz, the glam, the lifestyle, the management, the money, blah, 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 just to show me what I actually needed, which was him. And it's wild because it's like he gave me all of it just for me to realize at the top I was not happy. Things weren't good. I wasn't satisfied or fulfilled with the state in which I was at that I thought would bring me this load of unwavering happiness. And then when I started turning to him and focusing on that relationship and being more intentional and looking at the word, correlating it with my life and where I'm at, because that's the dope thing too. Like this journey is solely for me. Nobody can judge it. Nobody can tell me what to do. Nobody can tell me how to interpret or analyze what I've read or how I decide to incorporate it within my life. It's all a self journey and like God is in us all. The peace be still when you're still, you're really with God, right? I think that's what that emotion that came out of me the first time that I just sat still with my husband and I got emotional hearing God's technology is because it was the first time I was tapping into self. And it's wild because I was unaware that I was not doing it. But I also had started this journey seven years ago at such a young age and lacked the consciousness of disconnecting. I have glimmers of what disconnecting was as a child, right? Like I feel like a lot of us millennials are kind of the last generation that knew playing outside and playing with Barbies or just not having tech like that. We didn't have iPads and shit when we were kids. We had to use our creativity as children to have fun, to live life. Now, at the rate that things are going and the way technology is constantly pumping out new things to us, it's like, that's why I feel like everybody is kind of becoming the same person, doing the same shit, it's all these trends, all this blah, blah, blah. I have to realize I don't want to be a part of that. That doesn't feel right to me spiritually. That doesn't feel aligned with who I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to do, what my purpose here is. And I think that's why it was never a feeling of satisfaction when I made it to the top. That was why my spirit continued to be disrupted. It was going to continue to be disrupted until I tried something new. And the trying something new was starting to get to know myself, starting to develop that relationship with God because it's kind of one and the same because God is in us all like and that was the wildest thing for me kind of recently y'all that I realized the Holy Spirit right when I was in grade school and um, we had a theology class and I remember the teacher trying to explain to us that the Father Son and Holy Spirit are all one person but then also explaining that there's three people like God is God Jesus is Jesus the Holy Spirit so and like I remember literally asking my teacher how are they how are they three people but one person whatever she explained did not make enough sense to my childhood mind. It wasn't until the end of last year that it really clicked for me.
for me through a passage that I read. Basically, Jesus was explaining to his disciples that he was about, like, what he was about to go through, having to be crucified and dying for our sins and stuff like that. And his disciples are kind of like, you're going to leave us? Like, what are we going to do when you're gone? Blah, blah, blah. And Jesus was basically telling them, no, I'm sending somebody in my place. And in his place was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is actually what is within us all. The wild thing that... I now like it's kind of like it was this aha epiphany moment for me is God gave us all free will to do what we want whether it's good whether it's bad whether it's right whether it's wrong but there's a conviction that I would say most but I'm going to speak for myself there's a conviction I've always felt of when I'm doing something right and when I'm doing something wrong I still have the free will to choose either side but you know at your core at least I knew at my core what was right that is the Holy Spirit. Now that I am more aware of that like consciousness, I'm able to flow through my life in a more fluid and peaceful way. And it's been like such a huge burden like lifted off of my shoulders that it doesn't feel like I gotta figure all this shit out on my own. How to overcome X, Y, and Z. How to weather this storm. It's like I don't have to weather it by myself. And that has been a beautiful realization in my life. With the understanding that like God is within me, right? That Holy Spirit that's within me. I tried my best now that I'm aware of it and I've already seen the changes that have been happening in my life, paying attention to it, like listening to it and following its lead. That's where I be going. That's the direction because now post matrix, post Paul season, post storm, there's so many things that are aligning in my life and I'm so excited for you guys to see what's coming. I don't want to say share because I want you guys to be surprised and like enjoy the journey and stuff. But what I will say is next week, Monday, by the time you guys are seeing this next week, Monday is going to be a really big announcement that I'm going to be making on Instagram for sure. We'll eventually put it on here, but it's going to be a big announcement I'm making February 6th, solely led by the spirit within me that I'm talking to you guys about right now. This video will make so much more sense when you see it. And then I can come back and kind of talk about it a little bit more as to how the spirit led me there but with the announcement that's going to come I feel like I have found this purpose I found this fulfillment that I've been looking for for so long y'all and all it took was for me to not be so self driven to be honest like I think it's it's easy for a lot of us influencers to feel like the journey is just ours alone how can I get to the next level how can I make more money how can I work with this brand I I I I I to me for me I only got so far worrying about my damn self. It wasn't until I started looking outside myself, thinking bigger than me, that I started to have that fulfillment come back into me. Because I started this journey because I was like, when it came to natural hair and stuff, seven years ago, I wasn't seeing a lot of girls that looked like me with my hair type. As representation, there was a major lack in it. And then on top of that, I wasn't a girl that had the Coke bottle shape. I wasn't the popular girl in school. Like people knew me because I was a pretty dope ass athlete. But other than that, I wasn't like, like that popular girl, that Instagram baddie that I, funny enough, ended up trying to become. But that was never me at my core. So that, I think, has also been the wild thing, too. I, I stopped trusting my own sauce. That's what that matrix was. Because it didn't take me having to transform into an Instagram baddie to be who I am and attain the level of success and get to this place that I am in my career now. I gained that from being my damn self. And it wasn't until the last two years where I lost that direction for a second where I feel like I lost that kind of, like, connection with you guys, to be honest. That connection with myself. You know, I wanted other girls who could relate to the state that I was feeling like of not seeing representation, not seeing relatability there. Somebody who's just real, raw, because I'm not always on, I'm not always popping, face isn't always beat. That was an unrealistic standard I could not maintain. And I wanted to create a community that aligned with that. And then birth beauty yang. But the road has not always been that simple as we've just discussed. <laughs> Went through a lot of like ups and downs, trials and errors and going down the wrong path just for God to bring me back to the right path. And I'm so, like I even kind of feel the spirit moving a little bit in me right now because I feel almost emotional but in a joyful way. I've been feeling very emotional and spiritually dead inside for a while. That is the best way to put it. During those two year matrix, I felt spiritually dead inside and therefore I, I did not know where to go. I did not know what to do. And that's not how I was raised. Like I wasn't raised in a flex culture household. I was raised off of thrifting, love thrifting by the way. I was raised off of resourcefully spending 
money. I was raised with God in my life, regardless of how deep I decided to dive at that time. That was my foundation. That was my roots. I've always had roots in realness and authenticity. So now there's just this complete understanding an aha moment of like oh no wonder those two years were difficult for me i lost sight of my roots i lost sight of my path and stuff and i felt like i said i started this channel for those reasons and then that two-year matrix it was no longer about those reasons anymore it was all about self how to make myself feel better because i allowed myself to feel inferior at that time when i was around others that materialistically seemed to have more going on than me and that that's what this industry can kind of do sometimes to you too it can kind of swallow you up and you feel like you gotta allow the swallow. And now, after being swallowed up, becoming spiritually dead, and then being spit out, I'm like, no, I'm good off of that. That is not for me. So even like the end of last year, I stripped away my lash extensions. I stripped away my acrylics. These are actually press on nails, content coming soon. And I just decided to just strip away because even with like the lash extensions, right? I used to tell myself like, oh, it's because it makes my makeup routine so much easier. I don't even do makeup like that. All I do is my brows, my lashes, and lip gloss, and my little fake moles. I don't do foundation, concealer, all that stuff, so it's like, girl, all it did was change your five minute makeup routine to three minutes, like, literally. So, I told myself that, I think, as a way to kind of like, overshadow the fact that I was really doing it because everybody else was doing it. Pretty much every influencer or Instagram baddie or whatever is rocking lash extensions, and I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying it wasn't aligned with EC, May May, Edeka. I'm not judging nobody how they decide to live their life for them. But if I'm living my life for me, that wasn't for me. I love rubbing my eyes. I wasn't able to rub my eyes, y'all. I had to itch my eyes just like ever so slightly. Even that was annoying. Sometimes if I itch too hard or whatever, then the lash would end up hurting. Or when the lash extensions would fall out, I'm at the mercy of a lash tech to help fix me. Like, And then even like also having the realization about the wedding hairstylist. If there was kind of one regret I had about my wedding, was not doing my own hair because I was at the mercy of somebody else. My whole wedding was delayed because of that shit. It turned out okay, but it wasn't great. I more than likely could have did better. So I feel like this year, this EC Maymay 4.0 level up is not only standing 10 toes down in who I am and my authenticity, but it's also becoming self-sufficient. Even like, for example, I was going to this like spa to get my nails done and stuff. All they really do, they romanticize the experience. They make an experience for me by plucking rose petals and putting it in the foot bath and using different oils and salt scrubs on me. I can do that shit myself. I can. There are so many resources that we have access to to do things for ourselves and save money in the process. That's how I was raised. That's me 10 toes down standing on who I am. So I'm excited for all that this year has in store. I feel like this is the first time I'm really stepping into easy full throttle with consciousness now. When I started this journey, I very much so was easy. You can watch as cringy as I am, it's really cringy, but like my old videos feel like I'm her again, but more woke more aware, more evolved, and just have more direction now. It's a beautiful place to be, y'all. I'm, I'm so excited for this year. I said that this year was gonna be my year of more hands-on, groundwork, giving back, and I want my content and the way I carry myself and the things that I do, everything about my brand to represent that. So I hope that you guys end up feeling that. Really, truly seeing how God is working in my life, because I can't, I can't take credit for this. There there was no way for me to find me and get back to me without him. In the last two years, it's kind of just been about like showing my life. What am I doing? This is where I'm going. This is what I'm wearing. Like that, to me, very surface level frequency of influencing. And I feel like I've always been very aware of the power of influence and having people follow you and listen to you and care about what you have to say. And I've never really been somebody who wants to be fluffy and bullshit and like dwell on low frequency activities and low frequency things in life. But documenting how I learned how to take care of myself, my hair, my nails, whatever, like that's valuable. Cause that could teach you guys how to do it for yourself and save some money in return. Like, so that's what I mean. If my content doesn't bring value, then it is worthless. It's saying it a little harshly, but the last two years kind of of my content, maybe not even on here, but if I'm thinking from an Instagram standpoint, has been pretty worthless. Kind of like, how has this really been helping people? 
but I feel like through conversations like this and me explaining different things and how I'm learning and evolving through my life transparently, that brings value to somebody's life. I'm praying, I'm hoping if this video just helps one person, I've done my job or I'm doing my job as an influencer in this position God has placed me in. So yeah, y'all, we got a lot ahead of us. I'm very excited and full and happy and at peace, to be honest. A peace that I have not felt in a very, very, very long time. So if you're someone who has been weathering a storm for quite a while now, the best advice I can give to you that I want you to take from this video is to remember peace be still. That's where it starts. In order to gain that peace, you have to be still and in silence with yourself. You're not gonna find the answers anywhere else but within. And as scary as it might seem to go to that dark house and start addressing, because that was the other thing too, like when people say this journey of self-discovery and finding myself, I feel like they make it seem so glamorous. That shit isn't glamorous if you're doing it right. You're gonna find out a lot of toxic traits about yourself. You're gonna find out about some possibly childhood trauma that you never dealt with, baggage that you never even knew was hanging on you. But to be honest, the other side of it, when you start to have that awareness, the only way to fix something is to acknowledge it in the first place. If you haven't acknowledged it and you don't have any awareness of it, then how can you resolve it? You can't. Peace, be still. Be still. Be with self. No distractions. Just take the time and chance to get to know you. Being still allows us the time and space to actually hear our thoughts. And beyond that, at least for me personally, in my stillness, I realized that the only person who can bring peace in my life is not even necessarily me. It's through me, but it isn't me that can bring myself peace. It's God. But the only way to tap into the God within myself is to be still with myself. So, with all that being said, I know I've said a lot. I honestly have more in the tank, but this is just the start, y'all. This is just the start. I'm very, very, very excited about this year and what's to come for us all. So, with all that being said, I'd like to raise a glass one more time to you, to me, to 2023. Cheers, beauty gang. Peace. Be still. Okay. I don't mean, I don't mean, I don't, I don't mean, I don't, I don't mean, 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 I don't m